over a hundred billion dollars in revenue every year. At one point, one in eight people that were in the workforce worked at this place. Da 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 da. I'm loving it. Today, we're going to be talking about the founder and a couple scenes from the movie about the history of McDonald's. I'm Jordan Smith, VP of Sales and Marketing with iProv. Today, we're going to be looking at a couple different scenes from the founder. So, love it or hate it, uh, interesting movie for sure. My man Michael Keaton repping as always. But before we get started, do me a favor and make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you'll get notified next time we do some of these videos. Without further ado, we're going to literally take the very first scene of the movie from the founder. So let's hop in. I know what you're thinking. What the heck do I need a five spindle for when I barely sell enough milkshakes to justify my single spindle, right? Wrong. Are you familiar with the notion of the chicken and the egg, Mr. Griffith? I mention it because, well, I think it applies here. Do you not need the multi-mixer because, well, heck, you're not selling enough milkshakes. Or are you not selling enough milkshakes because you don't have the multi-mixer? I firmly believe it's the latter. You see, your customer comes in here, and he knows if he orders a shake from your establishment, well, he's in for a terrific wait. He's done it before, and he thinks to himself, well, by golly, I'm not going to make that mistake again. But if you had the Prince Castle five-spindle multi-mixer with patented direct drive, electric motor, will you greatly increase your ability to produce delicious frosty milkshakes fast? Mark my words. Dollars to donuts. You'll be selling more of those sons of bitches than you can shake a stick at. In this first scene, really representative of, of not only the way that kind of old school sales is done, but surprisingly a way that a lot of people do sales today, which is a big long spill. Right? Is there anything wrong with what he's saying? Yeah, a couple things and we'll get to get to my personal opinion on those. But also kind of breaking this up would be a lot better. And I know this is done from a narrative perspective and it's important to kind of set the stage for, for who this character is. But if we're looking at this from the lens of what lessons can we take from a sales perspective out of there, a lot of the things that he's saying are tight, but just split these up a little bit and make it more of a conversation instead of a commercial. The way that he's talking, this could literally be a commercial. You wouldn't even know that he's talking to another individual. Uh, if you do have a big long spill that you're giving people uh, that's this long, um, make sure you break it up and insert some questions in there. You increase the supply and the demand will follow. Increase supply, demand follows chicken, egg. Do you follow my logic? Whoa, okay, we got, I've got some issues with that. Don't increase supply to increase demand, find a way to make that process of how the customer buys your product more efficient and easier. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, uh, you don't sell enough milkshakes to, to warrant uh, more spindles on your milkshake maker, right? Okay, well, how many milkshakes do you actually serve? Okay, that's a pretty good amount. How long's the wait on those milkshakes? Oh, wow, that's a bit, huh? Okay. What if I told you that we could cut that time in half? What do you think that would do for your business or your bottom line? Just switching that process up a little bit, right? Kind of dips your toe in the water and sees what that individual cares about, right? Is this business owner more concerned with selling more milkshakes? If he is, all right, well, this product could help, but you might have to do a little bit more teasing. Is he more concerned about how long it takes his business to push out milkshakes? Yes. Great, I know I've got a product for you. So, what do you say? Nah, but thanks anyways. What do you say after he does that? Nah, thanks anyway. We don't have anything to say, because you've already blown your load. There's nothing else that you can offer him, right? He went down one specific direction that wasn't the pain point that the business owner had, so there was no other conversation to the business owner. Again, digging in, asking questions, right? Figuring out what feature of your product makes the most benefit to the person that you're selling it to is something that you have to do. If not, you might be selling something the person doesn't care about, and then what happens? You're Michael Keaton standing in a soda shop uh, and you just lost a sale and there's no reason for that man to talk to you again because the way you sold it was completely wrong. 
Okay, so now we're gonna skip ahead to another scene of the movie. Yeah, I, mean, I drove through a lot of towns, it's a lot of small towns. And they all had two things in common. They had a courthouse and they had a church. On top of the church, got a cross, and on top of the courthouse, that have a flag. Flags, crosses, crosses, flags. Driving around, I just cannot stop thinking about this tremendous restaurant. Now, at the risk of sounding blasphemous, forgive me. Those arches have a lot in common with those buildings. A building, well, a cross on top of it, what is that? It's a gathering place where decent, wholesome people come together and they, they share values protected by that American flag. It could be said that that beautiful building flanked by those arches signifies more or less the same thing. It doesn't just say delicious hamburgers inside. They signify family. It signifies community. It's a place where Americans come together to break bread. I am telling you, McDonald's can be the new American church. Feeding bodies and feeding souls, and it ain't just open on Sundays, boys. Ooh, now that's a pitch. What he's talking about is, yeah, people eat at McDonald's because they have fantastic hamburgers, but we need to sell an experience. We need to sell a filling, you know? We need to sell that sense of, of community and enrichment and nourishment that you get from these other institutions when you come to this place with the golden arches. Would I necessarily compare McDonald's to a church? No, but thinking of the what you do and what you sell as as you know, what is the end result that this thing provides? Like, what's the what's the feeling that people get? I've heard this saying a lot, which is, "What is your new car smell?" Think about when you sit in a car. You go to a car dealership. I know a lot of people buy cars online now, but in the old days, when you go to a car dealership, you talk to somebody, you pick out the car that you want to test drive. You sit down in that car, right? You've got all the, the features of that car, right? You've got the technology, you've got the steering, you've got the lane notification, self-driving, all of that stuff. But what do you also have? You've got that new car scent. You've got experiences that you're imagining that you're gonna have in that vehicle. What's the feeling you wanna elicit from somebody once they use whatever you're selling? If you can nail that, that is going to be a powerful tool. All right, everybody. So a couple key takeaways. Ask some questions. Figure out what's important to the people that you're trying to sell the stuff to. Figure out what their pain points are and sell to that. Don't just sell to what you think is important to them. Um, also, find a feeling that you want your product or service to elicit from somebody. And focus on that, not just the features. Do we sell burgers? Yeah, but what we actually sell is an experience. What's the experience that you're trying to sell or that you hope that the people you're trying to sell to get whenever they buy from you, buy your product, use your service? All right, we appreciate it. Again, like I said, leave us a like. Let me know what your favorite McDonald's order is in the comments, that'd be fun. And until next time, peace, peeps. Yeah, you get that Big Mac, you get some fries, milk. They need to buy that milkshake machine, that motherfucker's always broken. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.